Kirk Cousins is an Atlanta Falcon, and he got the bag once again. Here it is, the contract. Four years, $180 million, $50 million signing bonus. Hayden, that includes $90 million in 2024 plus 2025 guaranteed, another $10 million in 2026. That puts us at around $45 million per year. That is in line with the Patrick Mahomes, Josh Allens of the world, behind Deshaun Watson, Kyler Murray, Jalen Hurts, so on and so forth. That's the money aspect of this. That probably matters the least. What matters now is how Kirk Cousins is going to fit in the Raheem Morris mm -hmm. and Zach Robinson era of this Atlanta Falcons team. This move felt like it was going to happen for a while. I think the coaching staff, you just look at Raheem Morris, Zach Robinson, even Terry Fontenot, the GM. What have they always had? They've had in-pocket statue quarterbacks, Matthew Stafford, Drew Brees, for example. And I think that's where you're getting with Kirk Cousins over the last two seasons. He's the quarterback 12 in EPA per play, quarterback 10 in success rate, quarterback six in completion percentage over expected. Now he's coming off the torn Achilles. That's going to be a little bit of an issue. Let's say right. he's a top 15 quarterback. He has the potential to be the 10th best quarterback. I think that's a great fit, both schematically with this offense, but also in terms of the offensive line, which is it could be a top 10 offensive line. We've seen that. Uh, previously, the entire unit is basically back. And then the skill group, they can go vertical with Kyle Pitts and Drake London. You can actually catch passes with Bijan Robinson here. I think people are going to be surprised by how uh, productive both Drake London and Kyle Pitts are going to be. And then obviously, I've moved Bijan Robinson up to running back three third overall uh, in my current rankings, just because we're going to see the pass attempts go up, the play volume go up. They're going to be able to move the chains and stuff all assuming that 36-year-old Kirk Cousins' leg is up to par. The environment is incredible. To me, the only way that this does not work is if the Achilles does not heal properly. Because outside of that, the stars, the pieces are all aligning here. First, we can go to Zach Robinson, who's worked with Sean McVay, who then worked with Kyle Shanahan, who is in, mad in love with... Kirk Cousins, and it's, you know, the ability to, as you said, understand what the rhythm and timing is of the play and where it's supposed to go to. And if it's not there, you go to your second read. If it's not there, then you go to your check down to your third. That sounds simple. It can be tough mm -hmm. to find across the league and a guy that does it at a high level. I want to speak on that high level for a moment because I believe the public perception of Kirk Cousins has been a bit of a roller coaster over the last few years. But now we're in 2024. And I think that we're all almost in agreement where this is a dude when things are going right can be a top 10, top 12 quarterback mm -hmm. across the league, especially when you consider this Atlanta Falcons team are spending the fifth most money along their offensive line. And when those guys play well, Chris Lindstrom, Jake Matthews, you know, you have the second round pick Tony Bergeron last year. Like th this is an offensive line mm -hmm. that can absolutely keep Kirk Cousins upright and keep him away from pressure and disruption. And then that pivots on over to Drake London that, you know us, everyone out there, we think he can do far more than just the Arthur Smith downfield, four, five, six targets a game, mm -hmm. and that's it. I think we're going to see inside breakers. We're going to see backside digs. We're going to see all the good stuff that the most efficient passing attacks across the NFL have hit on over the last few years, and that is finally coming to Atlanta Falcons team that is honestly pretty loaded along the offensive side of the ball. Defense stepped up last year as well. They added some pieces there, so I think that they are, to me, very clearly the favorites for the AFC South or the NFC South. I do think that they can make some noise in the playoffs. Are they Super Bowl contenders? Maybe not completely so, but I think that this is a way more fun Falcons team that we can actually take serious, seriously, and it's been a couple years since then. Just to hit on this, with the Drake London, Kyle Pitts, Bijan Robinson. The Falcons last year were 29th in completions, 22nd in passing yards, 26th in passing touchdowns. All three of those numbers could be in the top 10 with Kirk Cousins. Yeah. Last year, Drake London was the wide receiver 40 out of 59 qualifiers in his catchable ball rate, according to Sports Info Solutions. Kyle Pitts was the tight end 48 out of 52 in the catchable ball rate. I think both of these guys, it's not just going to be the catchable balls that go their way, just more volume in general because this team can actually move move the needle now. I moved Drake London up to 28th overall, right next to Devontae Adams. I moved Kyle Pitts up to 68th overall, right next to George Kittle. 
I think that people are going to be a little bit skeptical because of the, the Kirk Cousins factor. A lot of people don't think he's very good. The injury risk is certainly there as well. But I think that Kyle Pitts and Drake London are underrated players. Kyle Pitts should be healthier this year. That was a big issue last year that I think mm -hmm. many people overlooked because mm -hmm. they said he was healthy and he did play a lot. But it was obvious that he basically could only turn one direction and mm -hmm. was moving at about 80% speed. Mm -hmm. And Kyle Pitts works downfield, which is super rare for the position. Kirk Cousins can actually deliver the ball down the field so uh i'm going to be very optimistic on drake london kyle pitts i want to buy the dip completely it's a way different scenario buying the dip this year versus last year with right. the desmond ritter types i think that uh i want to go all the way in on this falcons team not to throw salt on this do want to just in fairness mention that the falcons at the same time did sign charlie warner to a three-year 12 million dollar <laughs> deal at their tight end room shanahan tree again <laughs> <laughs> shanahan tree again and i mentioned the shanahan tree did not mention Kevin O'Connell's name, obviously, who has worked previously with Sean McVay, Zach Robinson. I said that really the only way that this couldn't work is if Kirk Cousins isn't right from his injury. We also don't know anything about Zach Robinson. However, yeah. we do know a lot about Raheem Morris and the people that work for Raheem Morris and love Raheem Morris. And if he knew that Zach Robinson was going to be his guy in his second opportunity of getting a head coaching gig, then I feel pretty, pretty good that we're going to at least get the bones of different stylings of Rams offenses that we've seen in recent years and how that can work here. Um, just quickly, you mentioned where you would take these guys. I want to mention where the Falcons guys are currently going because Bijan Robinson right now is the eighth overall selection, Drake London, the 36th overall selection. And Kyle Pitts, the 85th overall selection. My Drake London bags are going to be overflowing yes. all offseason. Mm -hmm. And I really don't care how far he's going to mm -hmm. go up because I'm not saying he's Justin Jefferson, but he's a primary pass catcher that can win at all three levels of the field. Mm -hmm. And I'm super excited to see how that fits in this offense as the primary pass catcher. People are going to be scared off B. John Robinson. Basically, if you drafted B. John Robinson last year, you're probably not going to want to draft him this year. I want to move him inside the top five overall. He, you said he's going eighth overall. I want him ahead of a lot of the wide receivers because the depth of the running back position is not nearly as strong as it is at the top. And I think that B. John Robinson, we've already seen it with Dalvin Cook, uh, with Kirk Cousins before. I think that B. John Robinson has the capacity to absolutely go nuclear this upcoming season. So I want to be very bold on him. This also means we're optimistic about Kirk Cousins to the Falcons. It also means that we have to really start to figure out what we should do with these Vikings uh, wide receivers, plus TJ Hawkinson. The running back group is in flux as well. What do you think the, the Vikings next steps are going to be? Because I think both of you were on the same page that totally. at a certain point, once every single report said the Fal or the, the Vikings are trying, they're trying their hardest. They're, they're still in hardest. on this deal. It's, yeah. it's not to that degree. No. If the same terminology is being used over and over and over again, my read on that situation was the Vikings want the public to know either Perception. fans or the yeah. other teams that, oh, we were pursuing this, mm -hmm. but I think that they have other plans at quarterback. Yeah. Hopefully you all have watched our mock draft video that we just did a couple days ago. The scenario that I threw out was signing Sam Darnold, who has worked in the past with quarterbacks coach Josh McCown, who just worked mm -hmm. in the Shanahan tree. Uh, obviously, Kevin O'Connell attached to that. And so maybe the verbiage and the language is very similar. And then you make a drastic move up for a quarterback. Maybe not one of those top three guys if you can't get up there, but the fourth one. Um, Diane Rossini has now said this a few days later. That So what now? Question mark. Look for the Vikings to go after Sam Darnold, who also has other mm -hmm. suitors. And Daniel Jeremiah has certainly mentioned that they could trade up for a quarterback. Um, mm -hmm. That isn't as structured or as stable as what Kirk Cousins brings to the table, especially when you're talking about the Justin Jefferson-ness of it all, along with Jordan Addison, who had a really, really solid mm -hmm. rookie year. Yeah, with you have Justin Jefferson on a long-term deal eventually. Jordan Addison's not going anywhere. Same thing with T.J. Hawkinson. So I think this was now the time where the Vikings were not saying it's time to go all in right now. Now this is a team that has a three-year window. And I, I do think that Sam Darnold is some bite at that apple. You can have a Baker Mayfield season if things go really well with Sam Darnold, per, perhaps. Jacoby Brissett also would be kind of in the mix here. And then J.J. McCarthy, that's the way to get this cap situation uh, more manageable because they obviously need to prioritize Justin Jefferson. But 
for those guys, Jefferson, Addison, TG Hawkinson, I'm going to be unfortunately lower on the market than what they're currently being drafted as. So Justin Jefferson's a top four pick right now. That seems a little bit dicier just because I think that the version of Sam Darnold plus a, a young 21-year-old J.J. McCarthy, even though we love Kevin O'Connell, I think that we should expect a pretty drastic change in quarterback play from last year to this next season. Yeah, at, at the same time, I do want to shout out KOC. Mm -hmm. Like what Kevin O'Connell did last year when Kirk Cousins went down and won games with a rotation of Joshua Dobbs, Jaron Hall, and mm -hmm. Nick Mullins to the effect that they were kind of too good to be one of the worst teams in the league. Um, that says something pretty to me cool about his coaching style and his coaching staff. And I, I don't know if we can necessarily judge, you know, where that team is going to be uh, until we have all of like the, you know, quarterback dynamics yep. uh, left over. I will probably be a bit more nervous about TJ Hawkinson than the rest just coming yes. off the late season injury um, yeah. versus where a bunch of other ascending tight ends mm -hmm. are, uh, are being drafted, man. This is a huge domino. I mean, this, this changes the entire perception of the Atlanta Falcons. Like in the past, it's exactly what you said. We were being sold from the owner, which likely probably had something to do with this because he's in his eighties and he wants to win, you know, Desmond Ritter and Tyler Heineke. Like these are good enough. We've got good enough pieces. This is absolutely it. It's very fair. I believe to have the assumption that we have yet so far in their careers, seen the best of Drake London, Kyle Pitts, and B. John Robinson. Mm -hmm. And what if, what if all three hit in the same season? Like mm -hmm. they could easily be the favorites in the NFC South because mm -hmm. of it. Yeah, I would I would make them as the favorites right now. I don't even have to see it yet. I just think that we have some faith in Kirk Cousins. And for the Vikings, even if they do take a step back this next season, I do think long term not playing this game with Kirk Cousins, I do think will make some sense just because they have some young talent, some of the very proven talent as well. And I think that rolling the dice, paying Justin Jefferson, getting the defense back in order here. Right. Uh, and, and then hopefully hitting it out of the park with one of these young players, if that's Sam Darnold or JJ McCarthy, I do think that there's at least an upside case you can make maybe in year two or three from now. Final point on that. They are picking 11th right now, the Minnesota Vikings. And again, that was worst case scenario. Basically, last year, where your quarterback mm -hmm. on the final year of his contract gets an Achilles injury. You rotate three other starters, some guys that haven't been in there for more than a few days. And the worst you could do is pick 11th overall. So yeah. if if I look in the mirror and I'm Kevin O'Connell, who calls a lot of shots over there, I say, look, no matter what we do, we're not going to be worse than 11th. So now is the time to take our shot. Um, whether it be the J.J. McCarthy somehow get up to the number three overall selection, potentially, even though that seems a stretch. Uh, this is their window to do that, and then you build from there. And I, long term, long term view. I'm I'm so optimistic mm -hmm. about the yep. Minnesota Vikings. It's okay to have a rough spot every once in a sure. while. Sure, sure. Not every team wins a Super Bowl. In fact, <laughs> one only one does, <laughs> and that goes for the Falcons too. People are going to say like, "Oh, well, you you don't have the the perfect opportunity for a Super Bowl with Kirk Cousins now." Like. Does every team win the Super Bowl? No, like, could you just have fun in the playoffs and that be a good season? How, how about you do what Tampa Bay did last year and yeah. win the division and then upset the Philadelphia Eagles and then go to the second round? Sure. That is a very, very successful a Lions, year. That's yes. Jared Goff. He's not, yes. Jared Goff's not as good as Kirk Cousins. Look at all the quarterbacks in the AFC versus the NFC, you know? Yeah. Let's have some fun. All right. We did have some fun. Hopefully, again, you have watched all these mock draft videos that were done. We have so many free agency videos on the way to you as soon as someone signs. Think about our channel because we have a video coming up. And then once Frenzy is done, NFL draft videos on the way. So hit subscribe, hit thumbs up, and we will talk to you all next time. See ya.